Hey guys, Aubrey here with Erin Motorsports. Um, today I'm doing a video on my uh, Anchor Solix F3800 power pack and the smart home panel and the install, solar panel options. Um, try and give you all the information that took me a long time to find and research. So um, if you're interested in doing something like this, uh, I'm gonna go over the solar panel options, the install, um, all the details that I can uh, remember to include. Okay, so here is the F3800 with spare battery pack. Um, so this smart home panel can run two F3800s. I actually have another one that I'm keeping in the RV right now. Um, and uh, it can run two F3800s and I think up to six battery packs a piece. So if you wanna spend a lot of money, you can, uh, you can run your house for weeks on this. Um, but the way this setup works is I put this panel in where my old panel used to be. And luckily I had a transfer switch so I could just turn this off and do it without having to contact the electric company and have them disconnect it. Um, this is my 100 amp breaker that goes out to the smart home panel and then goes through the smart home panel into my sub panel. So I have all of the things that I want to run off the F3800 on the sub panel. That includes, uh, let's see, two chest freezers, two upright freezers, two um, refrigerators, three refrigerators, and um, all of my uh, heating and lighting and everything is running off of this. Now this unit, the F3800, is a 6,000 watt unit, uh, 9,000 watt peak. So it can really put out quite a bit of power. It can power your whole house uh, if you if not don't have like, you know, heat or, um, you know, wouldn't want to probably run a dryer off of it. You'd run it down pretty quick. But um, I just connected these two panels together and, and uh, ran the wiring right through them, nice and simple. Um, so this unit has two XT60 ports here. Um, and I will get into the uh, solar panel options in a little bit, but they can run... 60 volts, 25 amps in there. Um, but you do not want to go over voltage. So that's the tricky part about sizing panels. You can run 2,400 watts of solar into it. Um, and they say, there's one spot on the website where I found that said you could run 30, 30, 3,800 watts of solar into it. But that is only if you are running a separate PV panel, uh, which is, you know, basically a grid tied system this unit can charge via AC at, um, through the home panel at 3,800 watts. So if you're charging this at 3,800 watts and you've got a grid-tied system, you can be charging it at 3,800 watts when the grid-tied system is running, uh, but it's not really. It's really 2,400 watts is the limit for the solar inputs, um, and 60 volts is a very important, uh, important thing to remember. Okay, so here's my solar panels for the unit. <clears throat> um, I built these mounts for it because one, we're going the opposite pitch of the roof, so I had to get them up high enough that the snowfall could slide off of them. And also, I have this roof right here, which is going to throw a shadow in the winter time um, if I don't get the angle high enough, basically. So <clears throat> I put on these mounts, I put three different positions. Uh, so that I have a winter time and a summertime position. And then if I get lazy, I can uh, um, split the difference and leave it set there. So um, I'll, go, I'll go online and show you these solar panels and show you some different options, but um, they work really well, but they do not max out the maximum amount of power that this thing can handle. Let's see if I've got a tag on. There it is. So these are the panels that I used, but you can see that they are, what, 45 volts? And so because they're not right up at 60 volts, you're not getting your maximum wattage. Okay, so let's talk about solar panels a little bit. Um, it's really hard to find the perfect solar panel. This is what I've got right here. Now this is a 46 volt, 10 amps, and it's not ideal. The reason that I went with this is because there's a local solar place 
um, where I could get panels. And if you get to, to 400 watt and up panels, it's really hard to get them shipped unless you want to buy a pallet of them because they're big and they're, they're bulky and they're hard to ship and they're easily damaged. So um, if you have a local option, that's, that's great. If you can buy a pallet because you want to hook up two inverters, you know, maybe that works out for you. But um, it, it's, it, that's, the, that's the tricky part. You can also get a whole bunch of, uh, of 200 watt panels and run them in series. But the idea is to get as close to 60 volts as possible and to have, um, you know, at or more than 25 amps per port. So more than 50 amps total coming in if you want to maximize it. So let me show you an example of a, um, so you can run more amperage than what the, the the unit is rated for because it'll only draw as much as it needs, but you can't run higher voltage. So here's an, here's an option for a really good one. Um, you could run these panels here uh, have 50 volts. And it's really hard to find anything that's getting close to 60 volts. Anything, it's hard to find them over 50 volts. So here, four of these panels would give you 26.6 amps and 50 volts, um, which is probably about as good as you're going to find. When you get into 24 volt panels, they're running like 40 some volts. So if you run two of them in series, you're over 60 volts. If you get 12 volt panels, they're at like 21 and you can't run three of them in series and keep it under 60 volts. So there's not a lot of options. Um, if anybody out there finds some good options, you know, be sure to comment on them. Um, but you kind of have to, to um, you kind of have to just deal with what you've got. So here's an option, uh, uh, one that does not work well. So this is a 12.88 um, amps and 36 volts open circuit. So you could only run four of these really. And you, you can run more amperage than what you, what you need. So if you say you're running, like I could run six panels and in the midday, I wouldn't be using all of the power that those are capable of putting out in midday on sunny conditions. But in cloudy conditions and on, um, you know, in the evenings and the mornings, I'm going to be able to use all the power that they're going to produce. So you're not getting the full benefit, but you're still getting a lot of benefit by having extra panels, even if it can't handle all of the amperage. Um, so, yeah, you just kind of kind of have to search around and see what you can find. Um, this is like an okay option here. This is a 50 volt, but you know, it's only putting out, um, oh, let's see, there's another, there's another here. It's only putting out uh, 9.68 amps. So you could run three of these together and you'd be at like just under 30 amps. Um, and <clears throat> that wouldn't be a terrible option either, but it's gonna be more expensive than running two of these, uh, you know, 560 watts. Um, so another thing that I want to talk to you about real quick is DC charging. So if you are interested in trying to um, put this in a, in a RV or something and run it, um, this is a really slick system that you can use. So you can run off of the alternator to charge it and you can use one of these units here. This one can go up to 200 amps, whereas the other one can't. But what you could do with this and what I'm planning on doing with it is I'm gonna take one of these, this is a, a um, battery isolator. So your alternator comes in and then it keeps you from stealing your chassis battery to charge your power pack. So I would have my alternator come in. I would have one of these go into my power pack. I would have another one go into my chassis battery and another one go into my house battery. And you can be charging this off of your RV as you're driving along. So I don't have this set up yet, but this is what I'm planning on doing. Um, you know, you could also just run it directly to your battery and you could charge it off of the um, battery. You could have a switch or something where you charge it, it, you know, it's only on when the ignition's running or something like that too. Um, another thing that you can do is you can get, um, you could potentially get a voltage uh, DC to DC converter that could put out 48 volts, but I've only found those up to like 380 watts, which really doesn't gain, it gains about 80 watts over just running a heavier cable and running at 12 volts. So um, you're not gaining that much by by um, using 
a DC to DC converter unless you can find one that can put out like 600 watts. But then you're going okay, to be Okay, so I just want to go over with you a little bit how so. the app works. So this is my house app. Um, this is going to show me the power coming in. It's going to show me whether there's power coming from my solar panels, which there is a little bit right now. Um, shows the anchor unit there. This graphic remains the same regardless of what you have hooked up. So, uh, like, it doesn't show you that there's a battery hooked up to the anchor or anything like that or change it, change any of that. Um, but what it does right here for you is pretty slick. This is my solar production numbers, so you can see how much it's produced in a week, in a month. Um, and then you can look at your home um, consumption numbers, so this is going to tell you how much you've been using. Um, then uh, this is storage discharge, so this is how much it's discharged from from the power pack. Um, and this is how much you've been drawing off of the grid. So um, it's uh, it's a really slick app and gives you a lot of information. We're also going to go we're going to go over here into settings, and I'm going to show you um, home power plant, so you can decide how much battery you want to keep for reserve. So I keep 90% for reserve for outages, which is way off of their suggested value. I'm not exactly sure why they suggest. Um, running it at uh, what are they suggesting 20% reserve from outages, but that's almost nothing. Um, I don't know if it's because they think that you're going to be producing more solar than um, than what your house can use, in which case you would want to be uh, storing it up and discharging it because you know right now if I'm producing more solar than what the house can use, it can only charge the pack up to 10% before they, they then can't use the, the solar power. Um, but my house uses enough solar that that's not an issue. You can also do time of use. Um, if you get charged more by the sol by the electric company at certain times than others, you can um, select time of use and <laughs> set those settings so that you're um, draining down the battery pack during peak uh, peak usage hours and then um, filling it back up in the evenings or when it, when the, when the price is cheaper. And also down here, we have the manual backup power. So if you select that, you set your start date and your end time, um, you set that up so that if the uh, if you're worried about there being an outage, it will charge it up to 100% and keep it there um, for the time period that you select. So um, the, uh, okay, so, uh, and then the other thing that you can do is you can go into here and you can go into devices. So I have two of these units. One's hooked up to my, um, to my, my uh, smart panel and is acting as a battery backup and it's got the spare battery connected right there. Um, so you can see that unit is currently charging at 58 watts. Uh, and then my other unit is in my RV right now. It is currently not charging, but it's still hooked up to AC or not to AC to Wi-Fi. So you can, uh, I can go in and check on it even if I'm not nearby. Um, and then you can go in and see the solar pan, the, the, um, Solar panel, and you can adjust the settings, but most of this stuff isn't used because um, you can view it all through your home right here. So that's about it for the app. It's pretty straightforward. It doesn't give you a ton of options, but um, it uh, is really nice to see what you're using and producing and what your house is using too. So uh, that's about it for the for the power pack. Um, I had one one note, which is that if you notice in the beginning of the video when I showed you the, the panel setup, there's a single piece of flexible conduit running from the smart home panel to my box. And um, I ran two gauge wire and I think maybe four or six gauge for the ground. And that handle, that'll handle 100 amps, but you shouldn't be putting 100 amps worth of stuff on that sub panel. Um, because the machine won't run it anyways. So you could probably put a 50 amp breaker in and run lighter gauge wire. But if you're going to run that heavy gauge wire, I would run two pieces of conduit um, because it was a really a tight squeeze getting that in there. Uh, the other thing is, is that if you have your machine plugged into the smart power panel, um, none of the other outlets will work, I don't think. Maybe the three uninterrupted power supplies on the side I was wondering if I might be able to charge it with like a lower wattage generator. So maybe charge it at like 1400 watts and then still have it as like a, to handle the surge capacity um, to make it go further. But you can't charge it while it's hooked into that 
um, that system. And you also can't charge it and run 220. Um, you can, if you're just using the power pack, you can charge it and run the three inter uninterrupted power supply um, outlets on the side that are 110 or 120 volts. So um, that's all I got for the video. Hopefully that was helpful and informative. Uh, I'm gonna be getting the race car up and going here soon. I got a race coming up in about three weeks. So it's gonna be, uh, I gotta go over it and replace some Heim joints, replace the um, steering rod ends and um, and I got a new mount for my uh, iPad GPS that I'm gonna put in there. So um, stay tuned and uh, hope for the best in the upcoming race. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more uh, videos and content.